Coach Corey Wayne, and this is my video coaching newsletter. And the topic of today's newsletter is going to be avoiding friend zone and rebounding. Well, this is an interesting situation because I think everybody at some point, if they haven't already, they will at some point in the future come across somebody who they click with, they have a connection with, but that person happens to kind of still be involved with somebody. Maybe it's not a good relationship or they're making up and breaking up. And then while they're single and they're broken up but they're still talking to their ex, you start interacting with them. Maybe you go out on a few dates. Maybe you hook up. But the whole time, the ex is trying to come back into the picture. It's easy just to say, oh, just don't get involved and don't mess around with people like that. But the heart wants what it wants. I've encountered those kinds of situations in in my own life. I've written about a few in my book. But at the end of the day, we're all going to come across these kinds of situations. And so in order to give you the best possible chance for success, I got an email here from a viewer who's in this same exact situation. I'm going to go through it and point out some things that he 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 should should and should not be doing that will help his case. But I got a quote that I wrote on this topic and I want to go through the quote and then I'm going to jump right into the guy's email. And the quote says The ideal situation for starting a new love story with someone is if you both are single and available. However, many times in life you may encounter someone who is recently out of a relationship or involved with someone who they are constantly making up and breaking up with. The reality of people in these situations is that they have not become strong enough to walk away when they know a relationship should end. If you choose to get involved with someone in this situation, You run a high risk of flaky behavior, being the rebound lover, getting hurt, getting friend zoned, or being a backup. Therefore, if you choose to play with fire, you must be strong enough to walk and never look back if you get burned, instead of sticking around for less than what you want or waiting and hoping that you won't continue to get burned. The key is to realize that people who have yet to develop the strength or conviction to permanently leave their lovers when it's time are very likely to break or continue breaking your heart. Proceed with caution but have other romantic options so you don't become attached and raked over the coals emotionally. And You may have heard me talk about this in other videos and also in my book. The only thing that you really have control over is how you show up. And the idea is that you want to focus on being your absolute best self. In other other words, having goals, a mission and purpose in life that you're passionate about, that you love and you enjoy and that you're pursuing no matter what's going on in your personal life. Because too many people look to another person as a source or potential source of their happiness. And then when that person doesn't meet your expectations, then you're not happy. The key is to get to a place where you're happy and you love your life and you look at romantic possibilities as just that, a possibility. It doesn't mean a certainty because when you start to look at something as being a certainty, then you become attached to it. Becoming attached to it means that if that person's in your life or they choose you, then you're happy. If they choose to go back to their other lover or they choose somebody else over you because they had more time with that particular person, then you choose to be unhappy. So let's go ahead and jump into this particular guy's email because he really brings up some good situations of what happens to happen. He's gotten himself involved with a girl who he worked with and the guy that she was hooking up with also happened to work there. So that can be a really sticky situation. And he says, hey coach, I met a girl last year but it was more focused on getting a new job to pursue anything with her. And what I like about that statement is he's focused on his purpose. He's focused on his mission. He's like, wow, there's this attractive a girl that works there, but I got to take care of me. I got to focus on what's most important to me. A lot of guys tend to get sidetracked and women do this as well. And they start focusing on and obsessing on a fantasy that they have. And this fantasy is the ideal of what they think this person should be. They're projecting their high attraction level onto this other person but they fail to ignore the reality that this person's involved in a messy situation or maybe they're just not single and available at all. If you see yourself as a catch and you love yourself and you value yourself, there's nothing wrong with expressing your desire but if that person is unavailable or they don't reciprocate, 
it's always easiest to just say, hey, if it doesn't work out with that person, let me know. I think you're amazing. And then you go all about your life and you don't ever need to bring it up again. And if they ever become single and they're interested in you in a romantic sense, they will let you know. They'll communicate it in some way. Simple thing is saying, hey, what's new with you? Oh, well, I broke up with so-and-so. I'm like, oh, wow, isn't that convenient? What a great opportunity. You and I should get together for dinner sometime. When are you free? That's simple. He says, she eventually hooked up with a co-worker of mine and we became close friends. This was hard because I knew the other guy for four years and knew he had another girl on the side and he also had plenty of issues. I, ev- I eventually told this girl this and they broke up for a bit so in other words you threw a nice little hand grenade in there i can understand you've known this guy and then you also become friends with her but obviously i would say more than likely you also developed feelings for her and you were kind of ignoring that he says i told her i couldn't be her friend because i knew too much about the other guy and did not want to get involved That shows some strength, which is a good thing. She begged me to stay in her life as a backup. So we continued hanging out as friends as long as she didn't talk about her relationship. He says, I eventually developed feelings for her and realized I had dug myself into the friend zone. Definitely not a fun place to be. It's kind of one of those things. You kind of see the situation. You know him. You know her. They're kind of making up, breaking up. The fact that he's got another girl on the side he's hooking up with so she thinks he's being loyal to her. But yet she continues to date this guy knowing that in essence he's a liar and he's got plenty of other issues. What does that tell you about her? It tells you that she's not a really strong person because a woman who's really strong and who values herself and knows that she's awesome and knows that she's a catch, she won't fuck around with situations like that. That's why it's always better just to move on with your life because you get involved with weak people. The chances of you getting your heart broken are very highly likely. He says uh, – because people with a high self-esteem and a high self-worth and self-value in their eyes, they won't fuck around with stuff like that. When someone screws them over or lies to them, they're out of there. They won't, just won't tolerate it. I, I certainly wouldn't put up with that kind of crap at this point in my life. But when I was younger and I was – Desperate. In other words, I really wanted to have those kinds of experiences that I'd only dreamed about. It's amazing how these kinds of people, they tend to be in abundance. But as you get older and you get more experience, when you encounter somebody and they've got a situation like this, it's like you just pass and you go on about your life. He says, I discovered your videos and began digging myself out of the hole I was in by flirting more and noticing her responses. Well, it's obvious at this point now you got feelings for this girl and deep down you're thinking, well, if I can kind of be your friend and be on the side and then she breaks up with him, then I'm going to get her. You got to look at it as just another possibility. She's she's unavailable. Therefore, you date other people. The thing that really becomes a problem is when she's the only thing that you're focused on romantically in your life and yet she's fucking somebody else or in a relationship with somebody else because then your whole personal life gets put on hold because you're waiting for this person to become what you want or to become single. It's the worst thing you can do because at the end of the day, if it's meant to be, it will happen but you gotta, you gotta have, you got to lose your attachment to that person. You got to lose your need for them to choose you. It's okay to have the desire but the desire is I'd love to have her in my life but hey, if it doesn't work out, I'm going to continue looking because it will either be her or I'm going to find somebody better. That's the approach that you need to take. The worst thing you can do is kind of take yourself out of the game completely waiting around for things to change because that shows that you lack value in your own eyes and that you don't think you're worthy of having someone like that and that's going to cause the other person to pause because someone the high self – can you imagine James Bond doing that? Can you imagine James Bond sitting around and waiting on a woman who happens to be married that he'd like to hook up with or date or whatever, hoping that she's going to become single someday? It's not going to happen. He could be dead tomorrow. The bad guys could get him. So he lives in the present moment. That's what this is all about. It's about living in the present moment. If she's not available right now, well, then you keep moving. You keep searching until you find somebody who is, whose goals, whose values are aligned and they're ready, willing and able 
to start something with you. He says, I eventually told her I wanted her more than a friend, but I did I did not want to ruin her relationship with the other guy. She told me that she also had feelings for me and her relationship wasn't working out due to his drinking and gambling issue. She eventually broke up with the other guy and on Valentine's Day, we hooked up. Ding, ding. Nice. Good job. However, you got to keep in mind, she's obviously emotionally attached and she's weak. She's not strong. And therefore, despite the fact that this other dude's not really a catch and he's got a bunch of issues and he's a liar and he's a cheater because he had somebody else on the side, what does that tell you about her self-esteem? Because here's what happens. When you start to date a woman like that, things are great for a while. Six months, a year later, once the infatuation wears off, you're, you realize that she's weak and she has self-esteem issues. And at that particular point, because you've developed a higher self-esteem, because especially because you're applying to things that I teach, you start to realize you don't like it when a, the woman that you're with acts like she doesn't think she's good enough to be with you. It's a turnoff. And so therefore, what ends up happening is you end up dumping her and breaking up with her. That was what I experienced. That's what I learned because I projected my fantasy and then when I eventually got that particular girl that I wanted after a couple of years, I realized really that even though she was hot and she was sexy, she was a great lover, had lots of – we had a just kick-ass time, kick-ass memories. But at the end of the day, she wasn't in the same place that I was. She didn't look at the world in the same way. She didn't have that same killer look in her eye that I do. She didn't attack the things that she wanted in life and go after them relentlessly. She was more run by her fear and eventually after a couple of years of dating, that part of her really turned me off because if I was encountering a challenge in my own life, I wanted a woman that could understand that, that could could look at what I was going through and totally get it. But when you're with somebody who doesn't look at the world in that way, they look at the world through their filter of just settling and going for what's easy. So a lot of people settle in their relationships. They settle for mediocre because they – they don't know what they need to do to them uh, to work on themselves to become the kind of person that they want to attract. So they they attract somebody who's on their same level of comfort, and the relationship never really is what they dream it could be. He says things were great for about two weeks, but near the end, she said she was confused and wanted to take things slow. That's the part where I talk about it's like you're playing with fire. Because you all three, you work together. So she's seeing him every day. She has an emotional bond with him because they were obviously dating for quite a period of time. And plus, they had already made up and broken up once before. As Gerald Salente says, the Trends Research Institute, current events tend to form future trends. And if she did that in the past, she's probably going to do it in the, in the present and in the future. Why? Because she's weak. And that's the way she is. It's not your fault that she's that way. That She just is that way but obviously you're learning the stuff that you're learning from me and so you haven't had those kinds of experiences yet the key is the only thing you have control over is what you actually do how you show up it's easy just to go all oh, uh, screw her find somebody else who's single and available when you're already emotionally attached it feels a lot better to get that experience in one because think about it you hooked up with her for a couple of weeks and that was awesome it was a great experience it's a great self-esteem boost. It's a great ego boost. But at the end of the day, you're still disappointed. Why? Because she's going back to the other dude. He says, I admit I became complacent and I wanted things to happen fast. That tells me you were not in control of your own emotions. You lacked self-control and that's weakness. So, and that's not going to help you when you're trying to attract somebody, especially a woman in this particular case who she's going to go – she's going to gravitate to whoever the strongest guy is. He says also the fact that she had to work with this other guy put me in a state of fear and neediness. So in other words, it sounds like you kind of just drove her right back into his arms. Well, the other guy reached out and they both wanted to work things out. She basically wanted to keep me around as a friend but I told her I could not do that and walked away. Well, that's good. He said, so I became the rebound. And to make matters worse, we all worked together. She said she was sorry and couldn't talk to me anymore because the other guy knows we hooked up. I bet that was awkward. I, I had a couple of guys that used to work for me years and years ago, and one of them, and they were best of friends. And 
one of the guys, he was just a dickhead. He was a dickhead to his wife and he made her miserable and and uh and she's you know, she hung out with everybody in the office and one night she was hanging out with this guy who also worked for me, who happened to be this dude's best friend. And next thing I hear like two, three in the morning, I get a message on my machine that he didn't know where his wife was and she goes over to this dude's house because he has a suspicion and he didn't have any blinds or anything. And what does he see? He sees her walking around naked in his best friend's house. He was pretty upset about it. And so the next day, obviously, everybody at work, we had a company meeting. It's like one guy sitting at one corner. We had this huge long conference table. There was like 30 people in the conference room. So they were – he's like, just keep that fucker away from me. <laughs> so they like avoided each other in the office and it was just awkward for a period of time. It was never – they were never the same as you know friendship-wise but it's just – it's an awkward situation. So I know what it's like. I had two people that worked for me and I had to be the mediator because both of them brought in a significant amount of business to the company that I had with my partners. He says she also hoped that we could all be friends one day. He says not a chance in parentheses. I told her I had no hard feelings because I realized the whole situation was bad. I left the door open for her to contact me if she ever felt like working on something new. That's what you do. That's a self-loving and self-respecting thing to do. You look at it and say, you know what? I'm not interested in being the rebound guy or the backup guy or the dude that waits for the phone to ring. I'm going to move on with my life. And if for some reason it doesn't work out with him in the future, give me a call. But I can't hang out with you after what we shared and – I just that'd be too weird and awkward. I just can't do it. I want to find somebody who's single and available, and who I can create something with. He says I eventually bought your book and began working on myself physically and mentally. I also found a new job and I started to feel good about myself again. Good for you, dude. That's awesome. That's what you should be doing. That's what every man that's watching this should be doing: is creating a great life for yourself and all the ladies as well. Create an awesome life for yourself that you're proud of, that you're excited of, that's emotionally compelling to you. He says, after two and a half months of no contact, she texts me and tells me I still mean a lot to her and that she thinks about me all the time. We text him back and forth a little and I asked her if she ever wanted to catch up, she should buy me a drink. Well, I would have just said, hey, it's great to hear from you. Yeah, I, I think about you too. But at the end of the day, you're with somebody else. So if it doesn't work out, give me a call. You got to be clear 100% of the time. You can't look at that and because it's been a couple of months and you haven't met anybody that you feel the same way about since. Because what I what I read into what you wrote, it kind of tells me that now you're kind of not so congruent with your words, where you're in essence saying, "Hey, we can hang out as friends now." When you've told her that that doesn't work for you. But now because a couple of months have gone by, now you're kind of open to it because what the real reason why she contacted you is obviously things are probably not looking like they're going to work out with this other guy because why would they? If they didn't work out the first time around, it ain't going to work the second, third or the fourth time around. So she's feeling you out to see what the likelihood is that she can line you up. But in, a vor- in order to keep yourself out of the friend zone, you have to be clear. Hey, it's great hearing from you. Hey, I feel the same way. I think about you too. As I said before, if things don't work out with that other guy, give me a call because I would definitely love to see you again. I'd love to make love. I think you're amazing. And you can say those things and then you walk and never look back. But you got to reiterate it, especially that based on what you shared here. He says she said she would think about it. Well, that means no. So that tells me that she was just calling to feel you out but she's not ready to do anything. So that tells me you're a little over eager because it's been a while. You're emotionally wrapped up. That's you gotta you gotta exercise self control, dude, and you gotta be consistent and congruent in the things that you say. He says, I know she's still with the other guy, and according to the to the other coworkers, my question is, how do I handle the situation knowing that she's still with the other guy? Never ever meet her unless she's uh, she's done with him as, as long as she's not with the other guy. Your problem is that even though she's still with this other dude, you're bullshitting yourself into thinking that it's okay to start hanging out with her again because you think, hey, well, we've already had sex, so maybe I can talk her into it. Don't fucking do it, dude. You've got to be congruent because when you're not congruent, that's weakness and that's actually going to work against you because if you agree to hang out and she's still with the other guy, now you're acting as if you're okay with being friends. You're being the gay male girlfriend and all that's going to do is give you a really bad case of blue balls. I know it's tough to resist, but the bottom line is you got to stick to your guns. You got to be congruent with what you say. 
He says, I would like to avoid friend zone and rebounding and I want to thank you for your work. It's definitely improved my life. I promise to read your book 15 times more. Like I said, how I would handle the situation is just make it clear to her that – just say, hey, are you still with the other so-and-so? And she says, yeah, but things aren't going that great. I say, well, I would absolutely love to hang out and look at those pretty beautiful brown eyes, blue eyes, ears, whatever they happen to be. But the bottom line is you're still with him. And so resolve that situation with him and if it doesn't work out, give me a call. We'll get together. I'd love to see you. I'd love to kiss those beautiful lips of yours. I'd love to make love to you. I think you're awesome and amazing. But I got to run. Let me know if it doesn't work out. And that's how you handle that particular situation. You have to be congruent with that statement 100% of the time because when you're not, it expresses weakness and all it will do is keep you stuck in friend zone. So if you'd like to get my help personally, the quickest way is to book a paid phone, Skype, or email coaching session. You can choose any of those options by going to my website, clicking the products tab at the top of your screen, and just follow the instructions. And I will talk to you soon. 